Test one, test one. Good morning, everybody. Check one, check. Good to see you all here. Uh, before we start, uh, ask you if you could turn off any electronic devices. Thank you so much. Reminds me I left my phone upstairs. And if you haven't grabbed a song sheet, please grab a song sheet so we could all sing along together. Let's all stand up and greet one another. Please join us in singing, Come to the Lord. the Lord come to the table of lasting life bring your burdens there's no price just come to the Lord eat this bread and never hunger I will give you life Drink the cup I place before you, you will never die. Come to the Lord, come to the table of lasting life. Bring your burdens, there's no price, just come to the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today the church celebrates the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. We remember that Jesus is really present under the sacramental signs of bread and wine. To acknowledge, to, uh, to, acknowledge, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins, trusting in God's mercy and love. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory. Glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, glory, glory to God in the highest, glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Sing our glory, glory. 
glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. And being a priest of God Most High, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God Most High, the creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord. priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right Till I make your enemies your food stew. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever. The scepter of your power, the Lord will stretch forth from Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. You are a priest forever. In the line of Melchizedek, you are a priest forever. In the line of Melchizedek, yours is princely power in the 
day of your birth in holy splendor before the day start like the dew I have begotten you you are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek you are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms to find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, give them some food yourselves. They replied, five loaves and two fish are all we have unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about 5,000. Then he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled 12 wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. For this feast of the body and blood of Christ, Corpus Christi, the church gives us the story of the feeding of the five thousand. We've all heard this many times before we know it. We know this, that they're here. We have a crowd 
which has been, which is spiritually hungry to hear what Jesus says, and who now, at the end of the long day, are physically hungry. And Jesus performs an impossible miracle that changes scarcity into abundance. Now, all the things that Jesus did, feeding, healing, forgiving, reintegrating people back into society, giving satisfaction, providing for people's needs were all miracles and wonders. But they also pointed forward to something else, which is the kingdom of God. Jesus never actually says, he never defines the kingdom of God, but instead he tells and shows what it is like. Because each of the things that he does points forward to something which is still to come at this point. He took bread, blessed it, and broke it. And he gave the bread and the fish to the crowd. He fed them, and they point to Jesus' ultimate gift, which is his death of himself on the cross. Now, you and I are flesh, um, sometimes a bit too much flesh. We have bodies which need fuel to function and to live. If we have a need, it means that we cannot supply it ourselves. We need somebody or something else. We have to be dependent on someone. So physically, we are dependent on taking in enough calories. Psychologically, we need other people. We need, we are dependent on family and friends and good and sustaining relationships to feel that we are well and that we can thrive. So we have body and we have mind. But you and I are also soul as well. So question, where and how do our souls get fed? What is good food for the soul? How much attention do any of us pay to feeding our soul in the same way that we might feed to feeding our body? We are, I think, a foodie society. We have a plague of obesity and of eating disorders at the same time. But we know about nutrition, and generally in this country there is food shortage, but not many people starve on the streets. But we have a lot to learn about spiritual nourishment. Amongst the things that we need to learn and remind ourselves is that not everything which looks good is going to provide long-term sustenance. Physically, man does not live off donuts alone. We need better food than that. So we also need good quality spiritual food as well so that we can grow and thrive. And not everything which looks good is in fact good for us. There are things which promise to provide us with spiritual sustenance, to keep us going, to make us feel fulfilled, to bring us into closer relationship with God and with each other, but which in the long term turn out to be poisonous. We need a complete diet, something which will completely fill us, body, soul. We would fill our souls. With the feeding of the 5,000, or the why, or of Jesus turning the, wine, the water into wine at Cana. It is Jesus who gives, who supplies the food. And at the Last Supper, Jesus said, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life within you. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. In the Eucharist, it is Jesus who himself, who not only gives food, but who is food for our souls? Who is that complete nutrition to feed us? What does it mean that Jesus gives us himself, that he feeds us with his body and his blood? Perhaps one image here might be the mother who breastfeeds her baby. Now, I'm speaking theoretically here because I've never actually breastfed, but uh, it requires sacrifice on the part of the mother. She's actually giving of herself so that in some ways her body has be, can be turned into the child's body. But there's more than just physical nutrition going on there. It's also part of that deep, deep bonding. It's the expression of love between mother and child. 
it creates love between mother and child. Now, Jesus is not our mother, and Jesus does not suckle at, at his breast, but he does care, and he sacrifices even more, giving up his very life for us. And the Last Supper and the death of Jesus on the cross and every Mass and the consecrated bread and wine we receive at the deepest level, even though they look very different and they are separate in place and time, they are part of the same reality, which is God, Jesus, giving himself to keep us going, to feed our souls, to transform us, to change us. And the miracle is not so much the bread and wine as it turns into Jesus' body and blood. That's important. But why? So that we too will be changed into the body of Christ. When Jesus says, this is my body, that means this is me, all of me. I'm holding nothing back. My body, my blood, my humanity, my divinity. Take and receive. It's all for you. I am food for your soul. Which sounds like a very good offer. But in fact, many people turn it down. Why turn it down when we have spiritual hungers? Fact is that some people are spiritually starving, but may not even realize it. So why reject that invitation? Well, they might in fact be quite a good reason not to accept the invitation, take and receive. Why? Because when we receive Jesus as the Eucharist, we are also choosing. We are inviting God to change us into a self-sacrificing gift to other people. That means that what we do as Christians and what we don't do or think or say should be signs of the kingdom of God so that our whole lives should point to the reality of who and what God is and who and what humans are called to be. In our second reading today, Paul is writing to the Christians in Corinth. Um, you couldn't tell it from this, but he's actually furious with them. Why? The Christians in Corinth were a very large community. They were very mixed. They were rich people and poor people in that community. What's happening is that they are taking the gift of the Eucharist, they're celebrating the Eucharist, but they are separating rich and poor. The rich continue to fill themselves with good things, and the poor are sent hungry away, which is effectively receiving the gift, but not passing it on, not being willing to be transformed into a sign of the kingdom. And in our world, that story continues. Worldwide, the poor still do not make it to the table. Today, on this feast of the body and blood of Christ, perhaps 60,000 people will die simply of hunger. 40,000 of the people who will die today will be children. So while the rich world struggles with obesity and eating disorders, one in five people in the world is undernourished and so cannot live well, cannot develop, cannot thrive, cannot think of a future. And staggeringly, for each minute of the day and night, each minute that we are here, the world will spend on weapons enough money to feed 2,000 children for a whole year. There are many needs in the world. We cannot answer them individually, but we can be part of the answer to the prayers of others. And Jesus is here feeding us so that we can be part of the answer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In faith, we present our prayers to God the Father. For the church, that through our sharing in the Eucharist, we may be strengthened to give ourselves in loving service to others, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For strength of spirit, that we may embrace the sufferings and challenges of life with courage and allow God to lead us through them to new life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all priests, that they may be renewed by Christ and show God's compassion to those in need and lead the church in giving praise and thanks to God, we pray. For all Eucharistic ministers, particularly those serving the sick, that they will grow ever closer to Christ and be signs of God's love, we pray. For the ill and the homebound and all who care for them, and for a greater respect for all human life from conception to natural death, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all fathers and those who have shown us a father's love, that God will grant them peace and health and help them give good example to their children, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of peace, that God will bring an end to the violence, give leaders a new understanding of the dignity of each life, and deepen the desire for peace in their hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have gone before us in faith, including Dr. James Sauls, may they experience the peace and joy of God's kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In the quiet of our hearts, let us lift up our prayers. And for an increase in faith, hope, and love, we pray. Father, we ask you to grant the things we need and help us to always live by faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we gather our gifts in support of our church. Please join us in singing, Jesus Messiah. He became sin, who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross, love so amazing, love so amazing. Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom for heaven Jesus Messiah Lord of all His body 
body the bread, His blood the wine, broken and poured out, all full love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. Name above all names. Blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. My brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat 
this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death O Lord until you come again until you come again therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world grant us grant us peace grant us grant us peace behold the lamb of god behold him who takes away the sins of the world blessed are those called to the supper of the lamb lord i am not worthy that you should enter into my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
bread of life All who eat this bread Will never die I am God's love revealed I am broken That you might be healed All who eat of this heavenly bread all who drink this cup of the covenant you will live forever for i will raise you up i am the bread of life all who eat this bread will never die i am god's love revealed i am broken that you might be me shall hunger again no one who believes shall ever thirst all that the father draws shall come to me and I shall give them rest. Sing with me. I am the bread of life. All who eat this bread will never die. I am God's love revealed. Broken that you might be healed. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by a reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. On this Father's Day, we invite any of our fathers who are present to please come forward and to stand here on the steps facing out that we may acknowledge and bless you. And as you come forward, Father Dorian and I have a holy card for the occasion. come right up front center and at the end of the mass I'll be outside if there's any fathers who are not with us that you'd like to share the blessing in a very special way you are God's first representative to us your children if we ever believe that God is loving it's because we experience it through you that God is forgiving that we experience it through you and so to be a good parent a good father requires the compassion of Christ the patience of Job, 
and especially the wisdom of Solomon. And so we thank you for all that you do, and we extend God's blessing. Please join me as we extend our hands in blessing. And God of love, hear our prayer. God of holy people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God of Zechariah, father of John. Of Joseph, husband of Mary. Bless our fathers. Bless them with the gift of your spirit, that they may be strengthened in faith and love. Be their companion along the pathway through life. Grant them patience and wisdom, that their lives may show forth the love of Christ in all that they do. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. And once more, a sign of our support and gratitude. And as always, we invite you to take home a copy of the bulletin and just a couple of very brief announcements. Our Father's Day Novena continues through next weekend. Happy Father's Day to you. Oh, thank you, thank you. I do it the easy way though, <laughs> easy way. Uh, the Novena continues through next Sunday and beyond. Father's Day cards are available at the doors of the church. Also our collection for the retirement fund to assist all of the retired priests of the diocese, including Father Doni. It's a way of showing our thanks and gratitude. And after Mass today, the Knights of Columbus has, is sponsoring a special coffee and donuts with wonderful pastries, and we're looking for a few new members to join our Knights Council. The four marks of the, of the Knights, charity, which is absolutely essential in our lives, unity, fraternity, and patriotism. I first learned about the Knights at my former parish where I founded the council there. Growing up, I didn't know about the Knights. My father became a Knight after I went away to college. But we want to really encourage the men of the parish and also the families of our parish to join the Knights of the Council. They make such a big difference during the course of the year. And so a very special thank you to our Knights. And please be sure to stop by, learn more. There's no commitment at all. And sometimes the best recruiters, I'm told, are wives because they get out of the house a little bit. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. And as always, a very special thank you to Father Dorian you. for your presence in ministry. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Lord, grant that your faithful people may continually desire to relive the mystery of the Eucharist and so be reborn to lead a new life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's all sing together, Everlasting God. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. Sing it out. You are the everlasting God. God, you do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Amen. God bless you all. And happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. God bless you all. Have a great one. Enjoy it. Holy Spirit be with you guys. Have a safe summer, all those that are going trips. God bless you all.
Have a great day. Thank you.